Hello, this is Mr. Widemouth. Today, we're gonna be doing a little bit leftover from last week's Creepypasta Friday. So without further ado, I'm introducing Out in the Woods. <laughs> Hello, um, hi, uh, I, I got this, uh, microphone recently, and, uh, it, it is working. Um, before I, uh, begin telling my story, I figured that I might as well post a few notes to you and a little bit of the background before I continue. What you're about to, um, hear was posted on 4chan's paranormal slash x slash board on Halloween day of 2013 by some sort of unknown user by the name of Prozac101. Being a daily visitor to slash x slash, I was one of the, um, first people to reply to this girl or guys or fucking whatever's post, and I think it's best that I tell you now that I was fairly disturbed by what I had read. Probably, um... The most I had been in s quite some time. It's kind of hard for me to explain the strange feelings I got, but there was something quite different about our story due to the fact that I couldn't stop thinking about it days after it had been first posted on this board. Just to make everything clear, I am not entirely the original author of this piece. Just merely an anonymous editor that felt like it was his duty to share Prozac's 101 story even further with the world. So, um, with that being said, let's just get started with the story. So, um, yeah, so let's dive in. Hey, Slash X, um, I just thought I'd share a couple of spooky stories with, uh, from my childhood to get everyone hyped for Halloween. So, um, yeah, let's begin. When I was a child, it was just me and my mother. We lived in a property owned by my grandma, a, a small, well, not really so small, a, a nice three-story old farmhouse right at the fringe of the woods. It was far off, um, it was, it was far off from the road and down a long unit of gravel driveway. To be quite frank, I felt very isolated at night, being so distant from many other houses, set in an area that hadn't been inhabited for about 30 years. And we started living in it. Quite often, I felt very, very, very rambunctious as a child. So, when my mom went off to work, I would occasionally um, skip the morning bus to school and stay home alone all day and enjoy some um, <laughs> pleasures that only could be explained by a child who actually got to skip school and enjoy the house for a fun moment. The big house had a habit of feeling incredibly lonely and sparse, so I spent most of my time playing in the forest in the expanse out back. Some distance into the woods, far enough that I could hear my mother when she called. There was a, um, toppled pine tree which, um, had crashed into another, and an even larger trunk on its way down. Now it was frozen there, forming a long arc over the forest floor. I love to climb that jagged stump at the base and then onto the fallen tree and steady myself to the point where it was just the middle, just right above that middle area. So essentially, um, a tree fell on another tree and created this um, arc that I like to climb on, kind of like a little fun bridge, if you will. Um, I was never able to make it all the way to the top because to be quite frank, it just got too steep for me to continue really any farther than halfway up the tree. And I had a bad habit of freaking out um, when I was too high up anyway. So, <laughs> yeah. One day I was sitting in my usual spot on the fallen tree, which was a good distance from the ground. Listening to the birds singing, simultaneously feeling the warmth of the sun on my neck, when I heard something strange from underneath paralyzing me in shock. Hey kid. I was gripped by a sudden surge of fear for a moment. The voice had um, come directly from underneath me. I strained to look down, but I couldn't see anything over the ledge. And for a long time, I just sat there in absolute silence, stunned to do much of anything. And I was at that point where I was almost, well, soon to convince myself that I had imagined hearing this man's voice at all. I know you can hear me. 
His voice was much louder this time as I yelled something out, and I, I scrambled up the log a bit higher. Trembling nervously, I dug my fingernails into the bark and held it tight for dear life. I stood there, I, I well, sat there, trying to collect my nerves and feelings for God knows how long. Although I couldn't see it, the presence of the thing underneath me was still quite clear. It was a, a depressing presence that felt heavy on my back and chest. Almost like something you would feel when you're getting in trouble. The bird's song was much softer and more callous this time. And when I listened closely, I swear I could hear the faintest echo of a human breathing. I gathered all my courage and I vowed to prove myself that this was my imagination by leaning over the ledge as far as I could and as far as I possibly could without slipping right off. Digging hard into the bark behind me, I stretched out my arms and peered over to f getting the full view of the empty forest floor and undergrowth. When suddenly, Come down here or I'll come up and grab you. It was so loud, it was as if someone was screaming right in my face. I released my grip from the tree and plunged off the platform. I was saved only by um, gripping by another branch. For one awful second, my bare legs dangled in the cold air, and then I pulled myself up, and I ran at full speed um, off the collapsed pine to the point where I never reached before. I sat there, just below the rustling canopy, pissing myself and staring into the distant base of the splintered wood. I was fully expecting at any moment to see someone crawling rampantly up the pine towards me, but instead all I heard was the wind whistling, leaves above me blowing, and the occasional snippets of a bird song. It was about two hours before my mom got home and found me, after um, much worried um, searching and trembling and crying on top of that tree. Although this incident spooked both me and my mother, in time I somehow recovered. Kids are resilient, who knew? And I was exhibiting that naive, um, hard skin of a child, although I never went as far into the forest as I used to, and I will never again approach that fallen tree. Once when I was 12, I had a chore of taking the firewood from the shed out back, just the edge of the wood, and then to bring it back inside the house. It was a tiresome job, wood was hard, and I was a rambunctious 12-year-old. And I always chose to do it at dusk when the air was brimming with mosquitoes and swampy fog and... Yeah, y y you get the picture. It was a foggy day too, um, as we lived near a source of water. Usually at this time, the sunsets would illuminate the um, foggy area, giving it this... Uh, almost serene, eerie effect. Quite frankly, it was um, relaxing to some extent, but <sighs> I kind of realize now how that will set the scene for what I'm about to explain. By the time I had made my last round, I would sprint back to the house, spooked. Um, one of my last, least favorite things about the job was the shed was full of barn owls. If you ever seen a barn owl's face staring at you in the dark root corner, then you would know how uncomfortable that shed would make me. One of these nights got mistier than it had ever before. A thick silver fog covered everything and limited my line of sight for a um to a short sphere around me. Even though the shed wasn't far from the house, I found myself feeling disoriented, and more than once I had walked in the wrong direction, both times for some reason walking straight into the woods. By the time I reached my last lo load, it was too foggy to see the street. My eyes stung from the moisture and made my vision blur. Lurching forward, I managed to um, walk headfirst into a tree. Um, doubling over and dropping all the wood I was carrying into my feet. And then there was a large crunching sound. As I went to pick them up, with my foot throbbing pity hard, might I mention, I realized that the ground was too misty, misty to see my own knees. I realized that I needed to head to the house. So there was, more not, there was more than enough wood for one single night. However, it was getting pretty dark, and I couldn't make out any signifiers in which direction I was heading in, and even though 
I um, cautiously walked several feet in all directions trying to figure out my position in the mist, I still couldn't figure out any point of identification. I couldn't even locate the fence or the gate, and the more I walked, the more I seemed to stumble into trees that I couldn't even, like, I couldn't even find my shed anymore, causing myself, well, cursing myself for being so dumb while trying to ignore my thr thumping heart and sense that something else was at play. I became, I became aware that I was lost somewhere in the fringe of the forest, screaming out for my mother in the loudest possible volume I could do. I was only met with um, the resounding silence from the depths of the mist all around me from where I stood, affirming that I wandered way too far from the house and I, I couldn't be heard. As deep panic started to settle in on me, I noticed a glimpse of something pink moving against a nearby tree trunk. Coming closer, I saw that it was a ripped out square of pink paper on it there's an arrow I was pointing um, left it looks vaguely like something like oh, something my mom would make I rationalized to keep me from getting lost so foolishly I followed in the direction that it told me to go in and well I followed the direction set by the green arrow shivering and in it got increasingly cold I kept walking for about five to ten minutes before needing to stop to take a breath. My heart was pounding so fast that it was beginning to hurt. As I was sitting down, I spied what appeared to be another note um, fluttering on a nearby trunk. I noticed that this one was embroidered with a long nail. It bore another arrow and this one was pointing up. A small, sloppily written on the note said, this way, in all capital letters. Despite my increasing panic, I was conv I convinced myself that these notes were um, only well, shot on getting me back before nightfall. So, desperate to get the hell out of there, I wiped my brow of the cold sweat and I followed the green arrow, to the point where I could just dimly make out another spot of pink on the inclined steps of this won't leave letter. At this point, it was getting pretty dark, and I well, had to strain both my eyes just to see a few meters in front of me, following this stream of green arrows, feeling less sure than where I, less sure of where I was than when I first stumbled into the woods. Groping out in the mist, I, I, I started to feel for the trees, although I was terrified by um, something unseen grabbing my arm. I came across a third green note which had another arrow pointing up again. This one led into an increasingly steep slope. I didn't recognize being anywhere near my house with the poorly drawn smiley face right above it. At this stage, I became too freaked to cope and I started to cry a little as I slumped against a pine stump. The possibility that I would be out in this woods all night was beginning to sink in like a syringe being driven into the veins within my arm. I caught a glimpse of another pink square near the distance, squinting hard, and I was I started to feel unnerved by these notes. All of them were looking fresh, without any sign of decay, despite the previous weeks of non-stop rain. And I read it from afar. It made my blood turn cold. As I stood on my knees, dead, silently wobbling in them in fear. My eyes were sensitive to the tiny pink uh, prickle of the noise in the mist. For a long time, I stood there in the rolling fog, reading and rereading that horrible note over and over again before snapping, before a snapping of a stick somewhere behind me caused me to start sprinting. Fuck's sakes, the twigs were snagging at my ankles and cutting up my face as I ran. Written on the note in big green letters was... My name. I felt like running for hours and hours, all the while while the rain and the mist leaped at the back of my neck, and something felt like the smell and feel of decaying breath of something, someone running right behind me. Now, I knew this fucking had to be somewhere in my, in my head, but I, I don't even know. I didn't know I was just some stupid 12-year-old kid. 
When I found them, I bolted in- when I found my house, um, I, I bolted indoors and crawled in my bed where I remained unasleep till the morning. My mom thought I just came inside and gone to bed and hadn't, well, the thought to leave the lights on. It was a miracle, aka some freakish coincidence I found this fucking house at all. The final incident at this damned house was witnessed only by my mother. Up until then, she had never experienced any of these strange things that I had. And although mutually shared this, um, although we mutually shared this peculiar, uh, oppressive quality that this house interior seemed to have, this placement of, well, this placement of deary imposing woods also, um, seemed to affect all of us. Although I was obviously never the popular kid, as you can probably tell by my voice inflections, but by living way out in the country in the opposite direction from everyone else in my school, I did make some tight friends in my first year of high school. One of these friends was Amanda, her na and that was her name. She invited me over for the night and I accepted. My mother drove me out to the place, which was um, about three miles away, then drove back home. When the night went well, we watched horror movies, subtly, and um, de devoured some pizzas, and <laughs> probably smoked um, a little bit of pot before, um, yeah. My mother went home alone where she um, intended to get some writing done. She worked for a magazine at that point, and it was about midnight when I received a off-putting text from my um, mom in all caps. And it read, Is this a prank? I need to know immediately! And that's at least the best I could <laughs> get out of it. Thinking this was some kind of joke um, text, uh, I texted back, Calm yourself! What is a prank? <laughs> And almost immediately, I got this response. Are you at the house? Of course, I, I began to realize that this clearly wasn't some sort of prank, and I, of course, responded, no. Although I was severely weirded out. I didn't receive another message around three, until around 3 a.m. when she told me to go to my grandma's house in the morning and not by any means dare to go home. I remember those bleak torrents of rain the day I went to my grandmother's and how terribly soaked I was when I finally got there. It was um, a nearby two towns away. I had to fight um, the temptation to go home and drop off my bags, but my mom's disturbing message from last night were enough, to, and were enough of a warning not to do so. When I arrived, Mom and Grandma were having a lunch. At first, my mother seemed to be in some sort of... composed state, but when I got a better look at her, I noticed that all the color had drained from her face. She was terribly trembling. trembling. At one point, she, she um, even sent a small glass um, crashing onto the floor after the... At, floor after at the cat's... Um, brushing of the ankles. It wasn't until later that night when Grandma would be sound asleep and she told me exactly what happened. She went um, further as to forbid me from telling old Grandma out of fear that, well, it would horrify her superstitions of the soul too much. This is what happened the night when I was at Amanda's, as she described in lurid detail. My mother was sitting in the first story living room, where she sat on the couch by the fire curtains open in full view curtains opened um to the view of the sunset and the canopy um over the, the last draft at first it was faint but she barely noticed it but after a while my mother became aware and vaguely irritated by the tiny thumping noises by her head at the window when she would walk over to investigate uh she well saw flat brown moths and well, yeah, that, that, was, that wasn't really out of place, as, again, we, we lived way out in the woods. Reasoning that that was the cause of the sound, she returned to her work, however feeling rattled in some way. It was 
When the noises started to get sharper and louder, that she paid more attention and saw that the rocks were being thrown at the window from the total blackness of the forest edge, she saw them appear from the shadows of the brush and they would fall in the arc just to bounce off the window, not to break it or cause any damage, but just to make that noise. Looking carefully, she, she could uh, see small cracks where the heavy ones hit, too. Right beside where her head had been moments ago. Temporary captivated, she tried to peer into the darkness and make out where the rocks were being thrown from. Then, by startled shock, she jumped back from the window as she saw some. She, she, saw, she saw me standing half behind a tree right near the window, grinning wide, staring at her from my only, um, with my only visible eye stretched wide open, showing all white. She barely stifled by a um, scream, seeing her own daughter stand there just smiling in a unnatural way. Not only did the figure not move nor blink, it was just standing by one of the nearest pines far, well, not far from where the rocks are shooting up from the bush. As they continued to do so in a loud downpour, my face become, became increasingly, um... I don't know how to describe it, to be frank. Thinking that this was some kind of sick prank, hence the later text, um, my mother shouted my name at the top of her lungs, frightened to the very core. However, instead of responding, the the mouth of the thing that looked like me behind a tree just started moving as if it were mouthing some silent words really fast. Suddenly, it turned his head to the side and seemed to be talking to someone else behind a tree. My mom said, well, anyway, sorry, 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 I'm, I'm getting a little freaked out. That's what my mom said. Someone who couldn't be seen, but she could see some sort of formless black shape hanging from the other side of the tree. The girl looked at, looked like me, kept on staring at my mother and speed talking until she couldn't take it anymore. This whole action got her way out of whack, and she she ran from my room um, as she heard, heard some odd, strange noises coming out of this thing. <sighs> she screamed and fled to my room on the second story, on, the only room with a working lock, where she shut herself in and sat in fear at the end of the bed as she rocks... Um, as, as the rocks begun to pitter-patter against the window downstairs, heavy heaving and weeping in fear. In my room, my mother said that she didn't feel safe. There was this awful smell and a weird humming noise in the walls, as she described. She tried to pry for time before giving up and just listened to the rocks pelt the walls and windows. Somewhere in the kitchen, she assumed, caught in the distant vibrant sounds of something smashing. And the weird continuous humming can... There's this weird continuous humming. Listening more carefully, she could identify it as the softest hits of a mumbling voice. In absolute horror, she recognized the voice then and virtually was too afraid to look. She tilted her head up at the closet door where an awful face could be seen staring right back at her, her mouth contorting and gaping in what sounded like a high sped whispering. The closet door was only a meter from my mother. It started to open slowly. And then, an unimaginable explosion of terror, she immediately bolted for the door and only fumbled with the lock as it, as bigger and bigger rocks came crashing through the windows, which began to burst apart and spray glass shards everywhere. Before I could finally get out, running out of, before, sorry, not me, before she finally could get out, she, can, she, she kept her eyes shut and off the woods, getting into her car and driving off. She said that she glanced back right at the end of the plunge drive and she saw a un unmistakable human form standing at the broken bedroom window watching her as her car went further and further from the house this would be our final farewell as my mother never set foot in that place again as my mother um, told the story she broke down into tears and I doubt her um, and I didn't doubt her for a moment I honestly um and, and fully believe that she experienced what she said she did it was also quite clear that we were done living in that house once and for all. 
I only went back once with my dad to see, well, who I should really see now, and he, he came from another state to help us move. Mom had already found a place in town, and we moved in. My dad and I just loaded up his truck with all my lovely possessions, and yeah, that, that was about it. We emptied a place. I, I wish I could say that there was some closure after that final spooking crap, but there wasn't. It was just relief to be out of there. Or rather, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, there's only two things um worth mentioning. One, when we checked the house for any signs of intruders, we found that several windows, including the one in my bedroom and kitchen, had been smashed and several rocks lying in the floor. Dad went out into the trees to take a leak, but when he came back, he asked how long... um we had that swing set for. Needless to say, we never had a swing set, and we'd never, um, set one up. Now it's fairly unsettled to discover that in the week since we had been gone, someone had assembled, assembled a rope swing set from one of the highest branches of the old pine over the ridge. Again. Out in the Woods is a amazing creepypasta. I actually really enjoyed the story very much. Its ideas and things in it are very well thought out. However, later on in the story, the writing gets incomprehensive and gets lost in translation, leading it to be a very hard read, especially those who are new to the creepypasta fandom, as you can tell by my narrations as well. It also seems to stumble a bit in the middle. However, all the right elements for a great creepypasta is here. And I can't honestly say any more. By the way, thank you Mr. Widemouth for doing the intro for me. That is a fun thing. If you're interested in sending your own personal story, send it to me at my Facebook, which is in the link in the description, Twitter, or Tumblr. I check the Tumblr the most often. So, yes, have a good one.